Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 10 of We the Revolution. Day 19 and... Oh, this is Henri -O. Good morning, Citizen Pash has asked to see you urgently. He must know. That remains to be seen. Lead the way. Danton, you traitor! How could you?! Hello, Bosch. Fidel, thank you for coming at such a short notice. Danton betrayed me. Danton, we used to be allies. I asked for his help, but he never came. You did. We are friends, Sean. I must destroy him. Make him pay. We must. Oh, well. So we're just going to set them up against each other so we can destroy them each. I think I want to, I want to succeed with this. Withdrawn as aggression, I know that. You can trust me. So how did he get here? Let's put this with aggression. Okay, that was good. That's a strong, strong, strong. It's not perfect, but okay. Who is the bastard that dared raise his hand against a servant of the state? And for what reasons? Apparently, I betrayed France. I am not a saint, I know, but treason? And who is accusing me? That political whore, Danton? I do not know for sure, but I can feel that he was involved in those accusations. If Danton made this attack, he must have fabricated evidence against you. We need to have something to fight back. What proof of his misdeeds do you have? I cannot do it anymore. I no longer have the strength to fight it. The whole revolution, the never-ending plots, it is impossible for me to trust anyone. Except you. I do not understand anything anymore. Wake up, Jean. There is no time for hesitation or melancholy. If I'm supposed to make a counterattack on Danton, I need to have something I can use. Let me help you and tell me where to look for it. Nobody will openly object to Danton, knowing that he can fabricate evidence of treason. They are scared. I, however, I'm willing to stick my neck out because I believe in the long-term benefits of our friendship. That alone should convince you. Really? You will help me? I, I did something horrible in the past. Someone forced me to do it, and now I am filled with regrets. I, I will owe you an enormous debt. All proof against Danton is hidden in a safe in my office. Ask my assistant for the key. Thank you, Bosch. I know what to do with it. No, thank you. I misjudged you, Fidel. You are a true friend. Of course, Jean. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course we are good friends, right? Am I the only one who thinks that it's strange that he sees us as his only friend now and his closest friend and oh, our friendship is so great? Went one night to play dice with him and paid around and I don't know. I don't see how we are so close friends, but okay, I guess it's only for our benefit. Oh no, wait. Who are you? So I think I need to do something for the people today, because I think I'm going to die. Oh, what's happening here? Your father defended the tribunal's honor during a debate at the Café Prokop, praising its virtues and achievements people even believed him. Thanks, Dad. Your position in the hierarchy is getting stronger as you reach ever greater heights. Okay. You are his pride and joy, keep it up. Thanks. Somewhat against himself, your eldest son is warming to you. Yeah, okay, dad again. He did not manage. Yeah, okay, yeah, he did not. Oh well, there's a lot of people that I sentenced to death. Won't you look at our relations? Oh, pretty good. So, what 
did you do? Um, counter-revolution, assault, murder. Oh no, and people want him to go free? In the darkest, Laurent Pascal arrested for counter-revolutionary activity and the assault of a gendarme that proved fatal. The accused owns a small weaving shop that he lives alone behind on Rue Popincourt in the 24th section. That is where the crime took place. The incident that is the subject of this case happened yesterday evening. Having received the denunciation of Citizen Pascal's counter-revolutionary activity that was directed to the legally legally chosen authorities of Paris, two gendarmes, Cristobal Remy and Fabrice Roux, arrived to bring him in for questioning. It is said that Citizen Pascal started a heated discussion with the gendarmes and denied all accusations. He behaved raucously and cruelly, threatening the gendarmes with violence. When they attempted to arrest him, he began to struggle and a fight ensued, during which Citizen Pascal smashed Gendarme Roux's head against the door frame. The impact was so strong that his skull cracked open. Gendarme Remy then overpowered Pascal and incapacitated him with a blow from the butt of his musket. Laurent Pascal, in the course of the investigation, we asked the neighbors of the accused for their opinion of him. They described Pascal as an impulsive person, always ready to fight, at least since the death of his wife. The owner of a local inn revealed that in recent months, Pascal has been a frequent guest and was usually drinking more than he should. The wife of the accused was reportedly decapitated last spring. Unfortunately, there were no records in the archives to indicate what she was sentenced for. I think I'm going to set him free, because... I would lose again with the with the common folk, so I think I'm gonna do I'm going to set him free. So what's this? Fabrice was my friend. Pascal cracked his head open even though Fabrice did nothing to him. We were to bring him in for questioning because they had some doubts about a testimony which was withdrawn by that degenerate Maxime after Fabrice's death. Okay. Laurent Pascal is a meddling prick and an informer, that's right, I'm denouncing the snoop. He's putting up posters and running around with leaflets that make fun of citizen Robespierre, of our god-fearing statesman. One of his leaflets shows Robespierre as a pervert and a vampire. I saw it the day before yesterday. A fat fellow dressed like Pascal. It must have been him. I bet he's plotting in that little shop of his. He never lends a franc for a cup of wine, that snooping meddler. Those men always have something to hide, don't they? Okay... So he was incriminated by someone else. So I guess the accusation is counter-revolutionary activity. Hmm, I guess the crime scene could have been the weaving shop. Okay. Hmm, slanderous leaflets, withdrawal of testimony, what was that about? So I guess the alcoholism is his personality, or is it an extenuating circumstance as well, because he could have been drunk? Oh no, it was just his personality. So bringing in for questioning could have been a motive? No. What else could it be? I mean, it wasn't like, it, it couldn't be an extenuating circumstance. Maybe there, maybe it's because there's witnesses for it? Hmm. The violent temperament could be his personality. Wait. So he's in for murder, assault, and counter-revolution. So could this be... Could those slanderous leaflets be the accusation as well? No, the counter-revolutionary... No, I already did that. Um, or is it the witnesses that say that he passed out leaflets or hung up no okay then maybe it's the accusation yes i don't know what the withdrawal of testimony is about is there something fabrice was my friend this is the other cop. Fabrice was my friend. Pascal cracked his head open even though Fabrice did nothing to him. We were to bring him in for questioning because they had some doubts about a testimony which was withdrawn by that degenerate Maxime. Okay, so this is what Maxime did and then he withdrew it. So this could have been a lie, right? So this could be the extenuating circumstance. Yes. Hmm, victim's injuries could have been... 
witnesses because it's what the other guy saw. Oh, that was a trap. Could the wife be an extenuating circumstance? Or a motive? Oh no. Um, I think I need my I think I need my mentor's help again. Okay, so bringing him in for accusation. It's not an extenuating circumstances, it's not an accusation, it's not your friend's personality, so it must be the witnesses. Yes. But it's something else too? Is it the accusation as well? How could this be an accusation? Okay, so I'm thinking about maybe the wife as the extenuating circumstances or a motive. Maybe it's an extenuating circumstances because his wife was beheaded. But it could also have been a motive, or it can be both. Oh, it's a motive. Yes. I have no idea where could where this could belong. I mean, this is not an extenuating circumstances because he didn't get in on his own. He didn't follow them on his own. It's not an accusation, so it's got to be his personality, right? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, it's not. A okay, then it's got to be an accusation. How is this an accusation? That man is a murderer, but we cannot be sure of anything else. Please introduce yourself. Laurent Pascal, weaver by trade. You stand accused of murdering Gendarme Roux. It was an accident. Smashing his skull open was an accident. So you're not pleading guilty. I'm saying it was an accident. I'm gonna let him go, so... Hmm. What was your wife sentenced for? To this day, I don't know for sure. They said subversive activity, whatever that means. What connections did she have? Were there, con were there any connections? Her grandfather was an equerry in the former king's service. Someone informed on her, just like on me, and that was it. Oh. I think I get that he put up a fight. Because, I mean, he saw how his wife got decapitated for nothing, and because someone thought she was guilty because of something that her grandfather did, or something like that. He, I guess he, w he thought that now if they get him into uh, he's going to die as well for sure so maybe that's why he tried to fight did you receive instructions and in monarchist leaflets from your wife's grandfather he died 15 years ago oh were you present at your wife's trial i had to collect goods for the shop and wasn't home for a few days but that was enough for them to arrest and try her they gave us they gave us 10 minutes to have our last conversation. Do you understand? 10 minutes to say goodbye to the woman you love. And the day after, they decapitated her in the square. The head of my beloved Marie rolling in the dirt like a piece of rubbish. Did you have anything to do with Maxime withdrawing his denunciation? You know I was in a cell. What kind of stupid question is that? The judge could at least look at the notes. You were participating in a monarchist conspiracy. Who was helping you? Conspiracy? I was working like a horse. When was I supposed to have the time to conspire? Mm -hmm. I thought so too. I just... I don't know. Do you tend to your shop by yourself? Yes, I opened it with my wife, but now I run it alone. Did you start your counter-revolutionary activity when she was alive? Was that the reason for her sentence? There was no reason to decapitate her. They can put you in jail for no reason, but not decapitation. Are you conducting counter-revolutionary activity in your shop? Of course not, that's absurd. A denunciation from someone named Maxime suggests something to the contrary. But didn't he take it back? Yes, but we do not know why. He was probably threatened by other plotters. People, listen, there was no plot. Were you hanging posters on the streets of Paris? The denunciation said he was. Go and look in my shop again, but you won't find any posters or leaflets there. Gendarmes Roux and Remy paid you a visit in order to bring you in for questioning, is that correct? Paid me a visit? Well, of course, they knocked on a door, we had some tea and talked about the good old days. That's exactly what happened. Come, off it! They banged on the door like they wanted the entire neighborhood to know what was going on, all the time bellowing about how they were coming to arrest me. What happened next? I let them in, of course. They immediately rushed in and pushed me around, trying to restrain me like I was some common thug. That's how they treat people. If you had simply let them restrain you, they would not have had to push you around. Resisting arrest does not paint you in a good light. 
Did the gendarmes show you the arrest warrant? As if they ever do that. They didn't show it to my Marie, just came at night armed like thugs. I I feel for him. So I'm just I'm just want to I just want to see. So where does it say that he's a and he's drinking a lot. Oh, the owner of a local inn. Okay. Hmm. So that's all the questions that I need to ask. So I could actually set him free now because I know everything I need to know. I would like to know what, what this was. Was there a struggle that evening? I refused to go. I knew I'd end up like my wife. We know their type. Every other one's as thick as a pig shit. But the gendarmes had the right to arrest you. You should have not have resisted. I didn't plan what happened. When I didn't let them restrain me, one of them punched me in the face. Then something in me snapped. I don't remember it well. Everything happened so fast. The whole situation would not have taken place if you had been less aggressive. How did Gendarme Roux die? Citizen Pascal. We were struggling. My Marie probably struggled too. I pushed that gendarme. He tripped and his face hit something. The door frame. The eyes rolled up and he fell to the floor, shaking. There was blood. A lot of blood. Call in the witness, Cristobal Remy. Oh. Oh, I hope I didn't screw this up now. For the sake of protocol, please introduce yourself. Cristobal Remy, soldier in the National Guard. Could you describe what happened that evening? We went to the address written in the order and knocked on the door. It was supposed to be a routine procedure. We didn't expect any difficulties. How loud were you? The knocking was loud, true. I shouted that we were gendarmes, but that's not unusual. We always announce ourselves so they know they should open the door. Did you attack Citizen Pascal? When we told him the reason of our visit, he started shouting that he wouldn't go with us. So you decided to use force. Fabrice tried to catch him and lead him out, as we always do. So you followed the rules? Of course. Right, because they never break them. Did you hit him in the head with your musket? Yes, unfortunately it was already too late. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh, okay, it didn't change. It didn't change. Okay, I'm done. He's going free. I know that... <sighs> He did something wrong, but on the other hand, well, no, it it couldn't be even argued with self-defense. He he should have just mm, did not resist and go with the gendarmes. But uh, I understand that he's a little bit doubtful, and I guess he knew that if they would catch him, that he would die. So no, he didn't. Was his act counter-revolutionary in nature? No, it wasn't. Well, how did the defendant react? Nobody showed one to him. That's what he said. I acquit Citizen Pascal of all charges. You are free to go. It's a good thing there's someone just in this court. Yeah, thank you. Finally. Finally, someone in the audience says it. He admitted to the murder. Is that still not enough for you? Was it that counter-revolutionary nature? Really? How was it? Oh well. Okay. So, you're free to go. Let's just take a look at the hierarchy. I wanted to... Okay, so Roland is out of the picture. Hmm. Okay, well then let's go home. I think today I need to work on the statue. I'm sorry, people. I'm sorry. I have to. Oh, yes. Please, come on, come on! Are you kidding me? Uh oh. Oh, I think he's going to get injured. But you know what? I'm, I'm gonna pay him free.
think my bruiser will be injured again soon. Ooh. Okay, there will be a riot really soon. Fine, let's just go on intriguing. Ah, oh, okay, I think it was stuck before. Ah, oh, perfect intrigue, yes! Beatrice was able to escape the guards and send a message to Marie Pache. She told her to be at Rue Saint-Maur with the money to compensate for the damage done by their relationship. We must intervene. Beatrice turned out to be unreasonable. Instead of saving her life and running to the other side of Europe, she remained in Paris to engage in blackmail. She is extorting money from a person she was supposed to love. The entire plan will collapse if she talks about the testimony we made her sign. I think I want to go with the guards. Although this could be incriminating for me, right? Ah, oh, let's go. Are you going to kill me now? Will you arrest me only because I was somebody's mistake? Because someone treated me like a possible source of income and nothing more? What does your heart tell you, Monsieur Le Juge? Come, Marie. It will be like it never happened, I promise. Okay. Oh well. Aw, oh, that poor daughter. That poor daughter. I feel sorry for her. She thought that the other girl was in love with her and and then she blackmailed her. You scoundrel! You you serpent! Danton never betrayed me. It was you. He did too. How could you? You were supposed to be... Friends, yes. Let us not waste any more time. Admit that the accusations for treason are true and your daughter shall be freed. I cannot promise the same for you, however. I attacked you because they told me to do it. That's never a good excuse. Come on. This is irrelevant. You will be tried like all the other assassins. They will crucify me because of you. The person who promised me his friendship and alliance. They will, sur they will surely remove you from office, but you will live. Marie will live too, but if you keep barking, you will both lose your heads. You will pay for this, I swear. Maybe, but you will pay first. Your trial begins any minute, so you do not have much time left to think. Ooh, really? I'm going to judge him too? Are, th are there any other judges here? I mean, seriously, my mentor is supposed to be a judge too. Why is he always sitting in my courtroom? Well, a lot of people want him to die. Me too. I mean, if I... I did kill her, didn't I? Of course I killed uh, 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 Miss Mrs. Roland. Seriously, of course I'm going to kill him too. I mean, you have to start it. You have to see it through. Oh, he's accused of treason and corruption. The accused, who will now stand before her, is Jean-Nicolas Pache, the mayor of Paris, suspected of treason through cooperation with hostile powers. He was arrested following the written testimony of Beatrice Caron, daughter of a local cooper, but best known for her connections with the rotten Muscadines. The girl admitted to being an Austrian spy and declared that she obtained information from the defendant himself. Thanks to her knowledge, she was allegedly able to disrupt the everyday lives of Parisians in exchange for revealing her informant in the city authorities. Caron was expelled from France under the penalty of death should she return. The investigation which I carried out together with Prosecutor Tinville indicates that Citizen Pache was following the orders of Caron's Austrian employers and the girl was responsible for exchanging letters between the two. We were unable to find solid evidence for many of the mayor's suspicious acts, but one aspect of the investigation is clear. The delayed construction of the Pont de la Révolution. Enemy forces wished to prevent it as the structure was to unite the French to become a symbol of the rekindled revolutionary flame. The plotters could also hope to bring shame upon Robespierre himself as the originator and supporter of this undertaking. 
The evidence of this conspiracy was discovered in letters that we confiscated during a search of the defendant's office. All of them were signed only with a D and we have not been able to ascertain the identity of this mysterious person. We have rejected the most popular suggestion that it is Danton as it is common knowledge that he and Robespierre are political allies as well as friends. Really? Danton is an ally of Robespierre now? Oh yeah, because we did, we, yeah, we saved him. For, for JNP, also Jean-Nicolas Parr. The gentlemen of the Maison's Guild are not willing to listen to our arguments and have suspended their work on the bridge. They will have to be convinced by force. Do it, Pash. Robespierre will give in and you will get your payment. Yeah. Okay. Oh well, then let's go. We do not have a lot of mistakes to make here. It's one and then it's over. The secret correspondent is probably evidence. The mysterious letter is evidence as well, right? Because that's what it is. Guess that's... Is, is that the same letter? Yes. Discrediting Robespierre is a motive. A symbol of French unity is... Cooperation with enemy powers is an accusation. Delayed construction of the bridge is also an accusation. No, it's not. Well, then it's gotta be a motive. This one is a mo- Really? A symbol of French un- No, this is- This can not be an accusation. So this must be the trap. So discrediting Robespierre must have been must be the accusation. Yes. I want to check the defendant's personal details once again. My name is Jean-Nicolas Pache and I am the mayor of Paris. You have been accused of spying on behalf of Austria. Do you understand, Citizen Pache? Yes, I understand everything. You are not nervous. That is quite unusual for someone in your situation. I am awaiting a just trial. Uh not sure you're gonna get it. Don't be so sure about that. Whoa. There is no possibility that we could set him free, right? Did you follow the orders of your employers and hinder the progress of construction workers hired at the Pont de la Révolution? Yes, I did my best to make sure that employees from every office involved would conduct strict inspections of all aspects of the construction. And the bridge is still unfinished after all these years. A pig and a traitor. I was able to interfere effectively. However, I was unfortunately not able to keep it a secret. Really? Do you admit to having cooperated with a foreign power? Yes, I do. That was surprisingly quick and straightforward. He's a brave one. What does he think he'll escape the guillotina for his courage? What did you receive in exchange for spying? Most of the time money, but sometimes we, ex we exchanged information. I was able to gain valuable knowledge regarding my opponents. What kind of nonsense is this? I am fully cooperating with the court. Do you realize how much harm you did to the revolution due to the complications around the bridge's construction? Yes, such was the intention of my secret employers. The bridge was supposed to connect the two shores of the Seine, where two areas inhabited by vastly different people were to meet halfway. Please spare me the propaganda, I know it by heart. Shut your mouth and listen to your betters! You do not appear to regret your actions. Because I am not flagellating myself in public, I do regret it and what I am doing here now should be sufficient proof of that. But you want to silence me, the prosecutor chosen by the people? It has always been about dividing the French. It worked before and still continues to do so. Citizen Fidel, you have to... There is something you need to see. Oh no. Oh no, who's hanging there? Frederick. <gasps> My son.
Oh my god, no! <gasps> he was just a child! Oh my god, you're going to die for this. You scumbag, my child! Alexei, try to calm yourself. Citizen Fidel, we heard about your tragedy. Is there anything we... All of you, shut the hell up! Pash, why did you kill my boy? Your honor, I did not kill anyone. Why did you do it, Pash? What am I even being accused of now? Of killing my child! I was in a cell all this time and we, we had a deal. I would not make any move against you, I swear. Still so docile, even when there is a dead child in the, equita in the equation. Who killed my son, Pash? I have no idea who could do something like this. I never... Who is behind this? Tell me immediately or you will go straight to the scaffold. See? The judge is threatening me with the guillotine for his own gain. This is not a trial. This is a farce. Quiet, child killer. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Oh my god, no. <laughs> no! That is so sad. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh. Okay, so the people are aggressive too. Yeah, I'm aggressive too now. It is hard to read him because he has like no facial expressions. I hate you. I don't know if you did it, but I hate you still. You you were trying to kill me, so yeah, death. Oh, death penalty. I agree. Oh my god, no. <laughs> they hanged our youngest son. What the hell? Great, and now I have to decide over this too? No, ah! I'm not in the mood for this right now. My, my child just died. <sighs> okay, slow down. Three young aristocrats, Maël Duré, Gilbert Borcelot, and Luc Lebas, almost drank themselves into a stupor. Being in a state of intoxication, they dug up a fresh grave, dragged out the corpse of a convict, threw him on a cart, and drove around Paris yelling, Look, he's lost his head for the revolution. What? <sighs> I suppose the common folk won't like that, but I wouldn't sentence them to death for that. Cédric Compère, a 12-year-old, knocked over a woman passing by, ruining her dress. The boy found it very entertaining. He was then chased by the victim's husband. When caught, he tried to blame his younger friend, who, according to witnesses, had nothing to do with the incident. Oh, come on, really? How should I... Really? I'm not gonna behead a 12-year-old child. Jean-Noël Pellissier earned a living earned a living stealing from doctors. He would make appointments with various Parisian doctors, go to the waiting room, steal an insignificant object from each and leave. He sold loot for next to nothing at street markets. No, that's still not death worthy, so <laughs> please. <laughs> uh. Did the confederate did it? Yeah, he did. Was his act counter-revolutionary? Yeah. With whom would the defendant share confidential information? With Danton? I suppose he wouldn't share it with Beatrice Caron. Maybe with Danton. I suppose that I don't know. I would suppose that it should, could be Danton. He's throwing under the bus. Maybe not. We'll see. I should get a... I am sentencing you to death. You will pay for my son. Justice. That's what happens to traitors. I have kept my part of the deal. Now keep yours and show me you are a man of honor. Oops. Ooh, they love me. Yeah, I know. I wrote a bad protocol. I don't know what to think anymore. I'm so sad. My son just died. But interesting enough, I don't think that Pash did it. Don't think that Pash orchest orchestrated that. Because how could he? <sighs> Let's speak to the common folk. Because he was a jerk. <laughs> hmm. I still don't know what attached. Maybe manipulation? 
Yes. Well, no opinion, because I don't. I still don't know what the perfect answer for no opinion would be. There are no shades of grey to crime, only guilt or innocence. Yep. In this days, it definitely is. This individual spits in the face of Themi and the people. Justice will not accept such insults. Yes, love me, people. You have gained power in France. Now spill the blood of those who oppose the Republic. Uh, I don't want. I didn't want to call to violence. I am not a murderer. Yeah, but you just hire murderers. Three to one, die. They murdered our youngest son. Oh my god, I still can't believe it. <laughs> I can't wait to see what my wife will say. To, or what my wife will say to that. I bet she will blame us. Where is Bernard? He's hiding somewhere, crying. I do not know what to... Why would you even open your mouth? It is your fault you gambled with our lives. <gasps> you shut up, Mathilde. You were the one who started to pledge allegiance to people. You were the one who put us on the political tapestry. You were the one selling me away to Henriot before I even had the chance to. So you were the one mighty for greed. So don't blame me alone. I tried to save you. We know. Do you really know? Because I can't see anything beyond destruction. I haven't for a long time now. Are you kidding me? I am truly sorry. We need to stay together. We must... Say, you stay together. I have to take care of our remaining son. He still can't understand why someone wanted his brother dead, though he needs to understand it. <sighs> oh my god, <laughs> oh, that's just so brutal. Yeah, just go ahead and hate me. Really? You like me more for that? How? I think I'm gonna spend more time with my father now because he's the only one who stays with me. Are you kidding me? Seriously, this stupid revolutionary patrol is... Oh, I hate them. <laughs> and he... Oh, he stirred up the ruckus there. Oh, I'm just gonna buy him free. I don't have time for this now. <sighs> Seriously, I'm so angry at my wife. <laughs> Because honestly, I mean, she was always the one, I don't know, she was happy when we were starting to get wealthy and now it's only my fault. I don't know, I lost a son now too, not only her. <sighs> it all started with this weird secret that Roland knew about Henrieu. That's it. Tell him, mother. What? Tell him or I will. What do you want her to tell me? We heard that you have the mayor's daughter. Yes, the trial is scheduled for tomorrow. Does everything depend on you then? I will not do it. Why not? 
It would be disreputable. And killing our children is not. I cannot. She's not to blame. Kill her. You are so young, yet you talk about murder like it was nothing. Let them suffer like we did. Kill her. We want her blood. Sending my brother to the gallows was nothing to them. You frighten me. You'll truly be frightened if you won't do as we said. What? Oh. No, 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 no. I am not going to do that. You know what? My father is the only one who is nice right now, so I'm just gonna spend an evening with my father. Screw you two. You know, I have a feeling that we're going to wake up with a knife in our backs the next time, but it was our wife. I think I need to... No! Damn it. I didn't want him to fight, but I need to calm the revolution here. Oh no, he's going to be injured too. And what, I'm gonna spend some time with my family. I am dreading the next day because seriously, I don't know. This wouldn't be fair. We used the daughter of Pash just as a pawn. I can't kill her now. Screw you, wife and son. That's not the right thing to do. Mm, great. What's that? White lies. Oh, okay. My father defended us again. That's nice. Thank you, father. You know, I thought that he was the one. He, is, he was the hard one to be around. But right now, he's the only one who stands beside me. Because my wife and my son are all bloodthirsty... ...somethings. Everyone wants her to die. But she did nothing, right? Both as an individual and as a repre representative of the National Convention, I am deeply saddened by your son's death and wish to offer my condolences, Maximilien Robespierre. Thanks. Have the first condolences arrived yet? One of the authors is surely responsible for the attack of the family. Really? So it probably is Robespierre. The guard is at your service if you wish to shake down the whole of Paris to find those bastards. Only a madman would attack someone's child. Henriot? In times like these, we can only entrust ourselves to God's will. We pray for your family, Jean-Baptiste Gobel, whoever that is. Who could have done something so terrible? I shall meet you soon, my friend, Jacques-Louis David. I cannot describe how saddened I am by the hideous crime in your family. France is by your side, Georges Danton. Really? Do you think so? Maybe it's Danton. Who knows? Oh no. Marie-Sylvie Pache, daughter of the mayor of Paris, has been accused of the cold-blooded murder of Beatrice Caron. The arrest was made in an abandoned house on Rue Semour, where the defendant supposedly copulated with the victim many times. The shack was perfectly suited for trysts intended to be kept a secret. The detention took place with the personal assistance of Judge Fidel. Oh no. <laughs> According to the guard, the defendant was found standing over the deceased with a blood-stained kitchen knife in her hand, ascertained by the, to be the murder weapon. The defendant put up no resistance during her arrest. Investigators have established that the defendant and the victim knew each other for a long time. They were seen together often, however, acquaintances of the defendant su suggest that she preferred not to boast about her father's position or even her real name. Beatrice, on the other hand, in the absence of the defendant, allegedly bragged about... Excuse my language, Monsieur Le Judge. She bragged about having often fucked the defendant. <laughs> oh, Beatrice, I had pity for you, how I treated you. I suspect this is just a silly prattle of a young girl. Nevertheless, I am reporting what I have learned. 
There are plenty of assumptions and gossip in this case. Beatrice had some connections with the Muscadines, but we were unable to learn anything of value from them. Rumor has it she was very much like this mob of delinquents, young, unruly, disrespectful of authority and depraving the sober-minded youth. At the same time, she usurped the right to call herself a defender of the people. Beatrice was a Muscadine to the core and it would appear the defendant wished to become much the same. Okay, so now we have to judge someone for something that happened because our actions. So if we hadn't interrogated Beatrice and pushed her into signing something against her father and uh, advising her to leave the country, nothing would have happened. If that wouldn't have happened, Beatrice wouldn't have started to blackmail her and she wouldn't have had to kill her. So. Now we have to decide if we kill her for that, which, which is basically because of what we did before. I mean, of course she didn't have to murder her, but... <sighs> Marie, I have been betrayed by your world. I have become a traitor, an Austrian bitch, and somebody must pay for my shame and pain. That person is you. Come to our place in the evening with 3,000 francs. If you do not, I will tell everyone that you are a spy too, and you will be called a treacherous whore just as I am now. If Beatrice just left, nothing would have happened and Beatrice wouldn't have had to leave if we didn't push her to do it. I don't want her to die. I mean, she committed a murder. Basically, that is what happened. And basically, that is what I am to judge. Uh, and in the cases before, I was always like okay he's accused for that and he did something wrong it doesn't matter what the circumstances but now i am so torn <laughs> i don't first of all i don't want to kill her because i don't want my family to be happy about this i don't want i don't know i mean seriously they threatened me last night that what would ha about what would happen if i didn't kill her i don't know what to do um, but anyway, we are much farther in than I planned, actually, so we're going to do this in the next episode. <laughs> I'm sorry for the cliffhanger, I was just so caught up and forgot that I wanted to end this episode before reading the case file and everything. So, we're gonna take a look at this in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.